Krishna Productions presents a dramatic narration of the book Srimad Bhagavatam, also known as the Bhagavat Purana. Srimad Bhagavatam is an epic philosophical and literary classic and it holds a prominent position in India's voluminous written wisdom. The timeless wisdom of India is expressed in the Vedas, ancient Sanskrit texts that touch upon all fields of human knowledge. Originally preserved through oral tradition, the Vedas were first put into writing 5,000 years ago by Srila Vyasadeva, the literary incarnation of God. After compiling the Vedas, Vyasadeva set forth their essence in the aphorisms known as Vedanta Sutras. Srimad Bhagavatam is Vyasadeva's commentary on his own Vedanta Sutras. It was written in the maturity of his spiritual life under the direction of Narada Muni, his spiritual master. Referred to as the ripened fruit of the tree of Vedic literature, Srimad Bhagavatam is the most complete and authoritative exposition of Vedic knowledge. After compiling the Bhagavatam, Vyas impressed the synopsis of it upon his son, the sage Shukdev Goswami. Shukdev Goswami subsequently recited the entire Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit in an assembly of learned saints on the bank of the Ganges at Hastinapur, now known as Delhi. Maharaj Parikshit was the emperor of the world and was a great Rajarsi or saintly king. Having received a warning that he would die within a week, he renounced his entire kingdom and retired to the bank of the Ganges to fast until death and receive spiritual enlightenment. The Bhagavatam begins with Emperor Parikshit's sober inquiry to Shukdev Goswami. You are the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. I am therefore begging you to show the way of perfection for all persons and especially for one who is about to die. Please let me know what a man should hear, chant, remember and worship and also what he should not do. Please explain all this to me. Shukdeva Goswami's answer to this question and numerous other questions posed by Maharaj Parikshit concerning everything from the nature of the self to the origin of the universe held the assembled sages in rapt attention continuously for the seven days leading to the king's death. The sage Sutta Goswami who was present on the bank of the Ganges when Shukdeva Goswami first recited Srimad Bhagavatam later repeated the Bhagavatam before a gathering of sages in the forest of Naimasharanya. Those sages concerned about the spiritual welfare of the people in general had gathered to perform a long continuous chain of sacrifices to counteract the degrading influence of the incipient age of Kali. In response to the sage's request that he speak the essence of Vedic wisdom, Sutta Goswami repeated from memory the entire 18,000 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam as spoken by Shukdev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. The reader of Srimad Bhagavatam hears Sutta Goswami relate the questions of Maharaj Parikshit and the answers of Shukdev Goswami. Also, Sutta Goswami sometimes responds directly to questions put by Shonaka Rishi, the spokesman for the sages gathered at Naimasharanya. 
One therefore simultaneously hears two dialogues. One between Maharaj Pariksit and Shukdev Goswami on the bank of the Ganges and another at Naimasharanya between Sutta Goswami and the sages at Naimasharanya forest headed by Shonaka Rishi. Furthermore, while instructing King Parikshit, Shukdev Goswami often relates historical episodes and gives accounts of lengthy philosophical discussions between such great souls as the Saint Maitreya and his disciple Vidura. With this understanding of the history of the Bhagavatam, the listener will easily be able to follow its intermingling of dialogues and events from various sources. Since philosophical wisdom, not chronological order, is most important in the text, one need only be attentive to the subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam to appreciate fully its profound message. This edition of the Bhagavatam was translated by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and was published by the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. Srila Prabhupada's consummate Sanskrit scholarship and intimate familiarity with Vedic culture and thought, as well as with the modern way of life, combined to reveal to the West a magnificent exposition of this important classic. This makes him one of the world's most distinguished teachers of Indian religious and philosophical thought. The book itself contains numerous commentaries with each verse. However, these have been omitted from this narration only to keep the number of tapes comprising this series to a limited amount and to present the continuity of the translations so that the listener may easily remember the stories and their philosophical points. Nonetheless, it should be clearly understood that if the listener wishes to unmistakably and truly comprehend the meaning of each verse, then he or she must first read the commentaries. The commentaries provide absolutely indispensable guidance, direction and clarification, for they present both deep and esoteric meanings of Vedic thought, as transmitted by the Supreme Lord Himself to the previous Acharyas, as well as to Śrīla Prabhupāda directly. This narration has been inspired by and is dedicated to His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu, and to Lord Sri Krishna and Sri Mati Radharani, and to all their eternal associates. Taking shelter of their lotus feet, I, Amalabhakta Das, pray and beg them to enable me in spite of my imperfections and weaknesses, to narrate this holy Srimad Bhagavatam in a manner that may give pleasure to their hearts and to their devotees' hearts as well. May all who hear this narration be filled with the constant desire to glorify the Lord and His pure devotees with eternal loving service. I offer my respectful obeisances unto His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is very dear to Lord Krishna, having taken shelter of his lotus feet. My respectful obeisances unto you, O spiritual master. You are kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and delivering the Western countries, which are filled with impersonalism and voidism. All glories unto you. All glories unto you. All glories unto you. And now 
we begin with the first canto, first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Questions by the Sages. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya O my Lord, Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudev, O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. <laughs> Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated, this Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasdev in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of the Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Shukdev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Once in a holy place in the forest of Naimasharanya, great sages headed by the sage Shonaka assembled to perform a great thousand-year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. One day, after finishing their morning duties by burning a sacrificial fire 
and offering a seat of esteem to Srila Sutta Goswami, the great sages made inquiries with great respect about the following matters. The sages said, Respected Sutta Goswami, you are completely free from all vice. You are well versed in all the scriptures famous for religious life and in the Puranas and the histories as well, for you have gone through them under proper guidance and have also explained them. Being the eldest learned Vedantist, O Sutta Goswami, you are acquainted with the knowledge of Vyastev, who is the incarnation of Godhead, and you also know other sages who are fully versed in all kinds of physical and metaphysical knowledge. And because you are submissive, your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. Therefore you can tell us all that you have scientifically learned from them. Please, therefore, being blessed with many years, explain to us, in an easily understandable way, what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for the people in general. O learned one, in this Iron Age of Kali, men have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. There are many varieties of scriptures, and in all of them there are many prescribed duties which can be learned only after many years of study in their various divisions. Therefore, O sage, please select the essence of all these scriptures and explain it for the good of all living beings, that by such instruction their hearts may be fully satisfied. All blessings upon you, O Sutta Goswami. You know for what purpose the Personality of Godhead appeared in the womb of Devaki as the son of Vasudev. O Sutta Goswami, we are eager to learn about the Personality of Godhead and His incarnations. Please explain to us those teachings imparted by previous masters or acharyas, for one is uplifted both by speaking them and by hearing them. Living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately by even unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is feared by fear personified. O Sutta, those great sages who have completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord can at once sanctify those who come in touch with them whereas the waters of the Ganges can sanctify only after prolonged use. Who is there desiring deliverance from the vices of the age of quarrel, who is not willing to hear the virtuous glories of the Lord? His transcendental acts are magnificent and gracious, and great learned sages like Nodded sing of them. Please, therefore, speak to us, who are eager to hear about the adventures he performs in his various incarnations. O wise Sutta, please narrate to us the transcendental pastimes of the Supreme Godhead's multi-incarnations. Such auspicious adventures and pastimes of the Lord, the Supreme Controller, are performed by his internal powers. We never tire of hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Personality of Godhead, who is glorified by hymns and prayers. Those who have developed a taste for transcendental relationships with Him relish hearing of His pastimes at every moment. Lord Sri Krishna, the Personality of Godhead, along with Balaram, played like a human being and so masked he performed many superhuman acts. Knowing well that the age of Kali has already begun, 
we are assembled here in this holy place to hear at great length the transcendental message of Godhead and in this way perform sacrifice. We think that we have met your goodness by the will of providence just so that we may accept you as captain of the ship for those who desire to cross the difficult ocean of Kali which deteriorates all the good qualities of a human being. Since Sri Krishna, the absolute truth, the master of all mystic powers has departed for his own abode, please tell us to whom the religious principles have now gone for shelter. Thus ends the first chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Questions by the Sages.